Hey yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel covering all the latest in pro wrestling. Coming up, we got some huge backstage news regarding what we're gonna be seeing between Goldberg versus Roman Reigns. Big update on plans for WWE Elimination Chamber, why exactly they ended up canceling one of their big chamber matches, and reason why top stars were left out of the already announced Tag Team Elimination Chamber match. Looks like we got another superstar now too happy about the current position in the wwe latest regarding cody rhodes controversial neck tattoo is the relationship between cm punk and the wwe actually better big confirmed matches as we head into this upcoming raw and much more before we get into it though don't forget to elbow drop it and hit those notifications to us always be updated on all the latest anyways uh, let's jump into it getting started with some of the backstage news as we head into wrestlemania and one of the major feuds that we already know are gonna be seen and that is Goldberg and Roman Reigns. They are already set to face each other at WrestleMania 36 for the Universal Championship. WWE made it official on Friday Night SmackDown. And there's some backstage news in regards to Paul Heyman involvement with this whole storyline or build off that we are going to be seeing. Which honestly it really gives me hope that it might be good because we're talking about Paul Heyman. So although Heyman is handling the creative decisions on Monday Night Raw, reports indicate that he will have a hand in the Goldberg slash Reigns buildup going into WrestleMania. The WrestleVotes Insider Twitter account noted that Goldberg and Reigns have a friendship with Paul Heyman, especially Goldberg ever since returning to the WWE. So that is why Paul Heyman will be involved behind the scenes with whatever they do leading up to WrestleMania. This in a way is not a total surprise because Paul Heyman was hands on with Roman Reigns previous storyline with Brock Lesnar and the same thing in regards to Goldberg. It was Paul Heyman who helped to bring him back to WWE in 2016 and he's been very careful with the booking of Goldberg. I don't know about you guys but I do feel like this is probably one of the best things to hear in regards to this Goldberg championship run with Paul Heyman being involved and with him being so great at building things up, hyping things up and of course ultimately delivering then him being very very hands on as we head into WrestleMania for this major championship match, then things could get very interesting. Onto some other news and following up with something related to this match that was already confirmed. So, at the WWE Elimination Chamber pay per view on March 8th, we were supposed to be getting a number one contendership match, and of course, Roman Reigns was supposed to be the one to pick up the victory to go on and challenge the Universal Championship. But as we know, WWE canceled all of that and instead they just had Roman Reigns go out there and set the challenge to Goldberg which when you look at it obviously Roman Reigns deserves this opportunity and obviously he is the right person on the brand to face Goldberg at Wrestlemania but the biggest complaint is that nothing led to it at least when it comes to storyline he didn't win that number one contendership match that people were expecting him to so the company previously promoted this men's elimination chamber match which now appears that the match is not happening. The reasoning behind it? Well, Roman Reigns was hypothetically stated to win the Elimination Chamber match and claim a WrestleMania main event spot against Goldberg. It wasn't noted exactly why Roman Reigns was handed the Goldberg match, which has caused people to be frustrated about it. And it looks like the idea was floated out there that since fans already knew Roman Reigns was going to be winning the Chamber, then they just went ahead to cut the entire idea. Which when you look at it, it hardly makes any sense because there have been time where we knew who was going to be winning the Royal Rumble and they didn't cancel the Royal Rumble. And there is multiple matches throughout the night on every single pay-per-view and television show that are extremely predictable, but we still have to sit through it and watch it. And I guess there's two sides to the whole situation. In one hand, I do got to say that obviously, as I mentioned, Roman Reigns deserves this opportunity. On the other hand, the complaint is that that WWE didn't even bother to give other superstar an opportunity to quote unquote trying to earn this championship match against Goldberg. Sticking with the chamber pay per view, they did announce a tag team chamber elimination match, but for the SmackDown tag team titles. And something that you guys probably noticed is the fact that the revival has been left out of this match and anything else related to tag team on SmackDown. The reason for it, which is not really a surprise, is 
because The Revival have yet to sign a brand new contract with the WWE. So heading into WrestleMania, there's almost no point of putting The Revival in a spotlighted position. Things are certainly not looking good, especially after what we reported on the last roundup, indicating that WWE tried to block The Revival from applying for a copyright on No Flips Just Fits. WWE submitted their application after the top guys were trademarking a lot of their phrases. It was noted on the Wrestling Observer Radio that Lucha House Party were the one that replaced the revival as WWE is not going to be quote unquote rewarding them and putting them on the show. Sticking with SmackDown, we got some ratings to talk about. John Cena obviously still got it. So this past Friday Night SmackDown drew an average of 2.7 million viewers, which is up big time from the previous weeks and certainly big credit to John Cena alongside Goldberg I guess onto some other news so Shinsuke Nakamura is still chasing the Intercontinental Championship he has a big opportunity to retain that title at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view as him Sami Zayn and Cesaro will team up in a handicap match against Braun Strowman for the IC title in the meantime though it does look like Shinsuke Nakamura is a bit frustrated with how things have gone so far Shinsuke Nakamura tweeted out and I quote I just want to feel alive this was interpreted by the IWC in multiple ways interestingly enough Sasha Banks ended up retweeting Nakamura's tweet so of course people started talking about it even more both Shinsuke Nakamura and Sasha Banks are still being paid very well by WWE but this hasn't stopped other superstars from sharing their frustration and how they feel with their current position it's not likely that Shinsuke Nakamura or Sasha Banks are even tempted to leave WWE. Sasha Banks signed a new contract with WWE last year and it is very happy about how rich Vince McMahon has made her. Nakamura doesn't appear to be leaving anytime soon either and who knows what he meant when saying this but one thing is for sure if you look at the replies for this a lot of fans make good points and certainly let WWE know their support for Shinsuke and how horrible the recent booking has been. To some other quick news there seems to be a lot of questions on social media and even you guys down in the comments of my AEW Revolution pay-per-view review asking the big question is Cody Rhodes set to on his neck Rio and the answer to that is yes it is Rio it's supposed to be permanent Brandy Rhodes doesn't like it but as she indicated her husband makes her own decision and I'm not really sure if it was the best decision that Cody Rhodes made don't get me wrong it is a fantastic tattoo but the biggest complaint that I see about it is the fact that it's not really on the best position yes he could cover it up with a scarf if he wanted to but there is almost no need for him to have it right on the side of his neck it's great to see how passionate he is about his American Nightmare character slash brand but that hasn't stopped people for calling him out on it and to some other interesting news for this week so for what it's worth CM Punk's name was briefly mentioned during the Smackdown Tag Team Championship match at WWE Super Showdown. CM Punk's name was mentioned by Michael Cole in reference to the time when he and Kofi Kingston were tag team champions. Back in 2008, what is notably about this is that announcer has been told in the past not to mention CM Punk and in recent weeks there has been no mention of CM Punk when promoting Fox WWE backstage show after CM Punk insulted the Miz while making some derogatory comment about WWE. WWE's relationship with Saudi Arabia. The irony in all of this is that of course Michael Cole is mentioning CM Punk on the show that CM Punk pretty much is absolutely hates. Probably more than anything else in the WWE. Or maybe not, but definitely something that he has been vocal about over the last couple of months, calling WWE out on that blood money. Again, all of this could be nothing, but Michael Cole would never mention CM Punk's name unless he was given permission directly from Vince men to do so. So it is worth paying attention to see if CM Punk's name is gonna be mentioned again on future WWE shows. If so, then it could be a sign that things between CM Punk and the WWE are at least a bit better or WWE just doesn't want to have CM Punk on the bad side of things and at least want to be nice to him and mention him during the shows. Or again, maybe we're just a slap in the face. They know CM Punk absolutely hate any show that they do in Saudi Arabia, so why not 
not just do it on purpose and mention him doing the thing that he hates the most on TV right now. You really never know with the WWE. And the last bit of news is confirmation regarding a Monday Night Raw this upcoming week as WWE announced three different matches that we're gonna be getting. Riddick Moss is gonna be putting his 24-7 title on the line. We're gonna be getting a quote-unquote now or never for the Street Profits as they take on Seth Rollins and Murphy for the title. And last but not least, we're gonna be getting Shayna Baszler taking on Asuka in a one-on-one -on -one competition, of course, to hype up their Elimination Chamber match coming up, which both of them are part of it. Anyways, guys, uh, that is what I got for you in this uh, video. If you enjoy it, find it informative, don't forget to elbow drop it and join up as we're the world to 200,000 subscribers. I'll see you on the next one, so stay savage.